Hi everyone and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, Movie Talk for Movie Fans. I'm your host Natasha Martinez and this is the daily show where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today is Christian Harloff. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Collider Movie Talk. What a fun day we have and what a great panel. Yes. Welcome to everybody. Hope also you guys have a great day. joining us, Clark Wolf. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me and congratulations to these, these two gentlemen. I'm very excited. Yes. Yes, and Mr. Dennis Zen. Hey, everyone. Uh, first off, I want to thank everyone who sent their support to myself, Christian, John Campia, Mark Ellis, you know, all those, all that stuff we appreciate. I also want to make clear, like, uh, I, as I'm replacing John as kind of the day-to-day -day studio operations manager, I am not replacing him as the main host. Christian and Mark will be doing that Monday through Thursday. I'll still do, be doing Friday. A lot of questions people have been asking about John Schnepp. Where's John Schnepp? He's right now on a plane flying from London to Pensacola, Florida for uh, some sort of Comic-Con. Yeah. He'll be back on Monday. And then another great announcement. We crossed 200,000 subscribers. That was good. What, a, what a day. Yeah, we did it yesterday. Picked up a whole bunch. It was really awesome. And the fact, and that also goes back. I'd like to give, because I know everybody here was talking yesterday in regards to John, what I want to say about John and what he has done for this brand. you got to remember that Collider Movie Talk had maybe 20,000, not Movie Talk, Collider in general, yeah. had maybe 20,000 when we came over. And from everything that John did, the assembling of the team and bringing it all together to cross 200,000 in just about a year, it's a big accomplishment. Oh, less than a year. Uh, in less than a year. Mm -hmm. So it's a big accomplishment, and it's a, it says a lot about you guys out there, too. Thank you. We are going to do him proud, do you proud. We have a lot to talk about. And one of the first things that we're actually going to talk about today, um, this actually just broke. So it wasn't in the show notes, and I wanted to let you guys know John Wick 2 finally gets a title and a little bit about what it's about. So John Wick 2 is going to be called Chapter 2. Great. <laughs> um, and it also is going to be kicking ass in Rome. That's really all, it can, all it's about is that it, he's going to be beating people up, not in the U.S. this time. <laughs> and I think that's a good move. I think that it's a good move to put him somewhere else. What I want to know is, is, is there going to be another hotel but this time Ooh. in Europe. You know, I think that they can set up brand new characters that we didn't see from the first one. Chapter two, I think, is appropriate as well, too. That's all I need. I don't need some, something witty for John Wick or John Wick two, a new dog. I don't need that. <laughs> I just like, I just, just if you set it up to where it's gonna be chapter two, I know that he's kicking ass in Rome. That's all I want from this movie. What do you think? I know you're a big what, fan what's, of the first one. What's the release date on that? The release date is right now will be released on February 10th, 2017. Okay, nice. so yeah. it's not. Too, Just too a far away. No, but, yeah. yeah, I'm super excited for it. I enjoyed the first one. You're right. Moving it to a different location gives it something new. Um, you know, I, I'm wondering, I think my th concern is what is going to be that motivating factor? Right. Before it was the dog. Obviously, it wasn't just the dog. The dog was to suck us, the viewers, in. But it was really more about his dead wife who right. gave him that dog. How can they top that? That, I mean, we know they're going to top the action. They're going to go crazy. We're going to have see a lot of over-the-top, cool action. But... How are we going to get emotionally invested into his character? Keanu the Kitten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're right, coming right. for Keanu Shared the Kitten. Universe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I there's like a it. crossover with Key and Peel, and it'll be great. <laughs> um, so that's my vote. Yeah, Did you, do you, you like the title? I do, or I do. Talk? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, I, I really enjoyed the first John Wick movie. Like you guys were saying, the action is awesome. I love action movies, and I love Keanu Reeves. I I like him when he's being a little uh, a little dry and a little a little goofy, uh, but still kicking ass. And so um, I, I think taking it overseas will be a lot of fun. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. And I think as far as motivation goes too, it's like you don't need a big motivation. You need something. But I also think that it's in John Wick's blood that he can't get out of it. Even though he, he gets sucked back into it some somehow don't kill him because i want to see three i want to see four i want to see five <laughs> keep john wick alive for as long as you can all right natasha what is up first on the topics up first guardians of the galaxy volume two not chapter two has officially begun principal production thanks to an announcement tweet from director james gunn while gunn confirmed palm clementif as playing mantis and the marvel press release confirmed kurt russell elizabeth debicki and chris sullivan joining the cast no official word has been released on their parts in the movie Christian, what do you think of the new image and cast confirmations? Uh, I dig it, and I and I dig the the image the most because it looks like the band.
band is about to hit the stage. <laughs> and that's exactly what you want from Guardians. I mean, it look, and, and you got Little Groot up there. I like that. It's, I think, is that the continuation that you're going to have <laughs> yeah. Little Groot Baby in the movie? I, I dig that. I like that. Um, I'm excited for Guardians. I, I really enjoyed the movie. I didn't like, like Ellis loved it. I know you guys love I liked it a lot. And I think that it's one of the better movies that Marvel had done in a while because it was so different. And it was a movie that, by all accounts, really shouldn't have worked. And it worked on all cylinders. So, I uh, I love this image. I love that the cast is confirmed, and I really I think that the person to be the, you got to give the most credit to here is not Kevin Feige on this one. It's really James Gunn, because of what James Gunn does with tweets and connecting to the fans and getting you interested. He knows how to do it. He doesn't bash you over the head with it. He gives it to you in the right moments, moments, and he gave it to you here. Um, I love this. I, I I'm I'm a big fan of everything they're doing. Clark. Yeah, Guardians is actually my favorite Marvel movie, um, hands down. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. And and for all the things you just said, I mean, it had no reason to work, and and it was it, for me as a, as a fan, it was kind of amazing for to see a major studio go, yeah, our two leads are going to be a tree and a raccoon, right, right. and this is going to be the most fun you'll have this summer, and they totally nailed it. And I'm a huge fan of James Gunn. Um, I think he's great. I love his earlier work. Um, Slither is one of my favorite, you know, new indie uh, genre movies, and um, and the thing that I'm the most excited about is Kurt. Yep. Russell. Finally confirmed. It looks like he's going to play the dad. I, yeah. He's got to be. He's gotta why, be. why would you cast him if he's not playing the yeah, dad? I remember we said that, though. We said that, I think it was last week we were talking about it. And we're like, do we think that Kurt Russell now is going to be announced? And I think the majority of us were like, yeah, it, it'll happen. Um, and I'm so glad that they confirmed that Kurt Russell is going to be the guy. He's going to He's going to be Star-Lord's dad. Uh, it's so cool. It's so exciting. And, you know, I'm I, personally, I'm really kind of curious. I, I would love to know why Kurt Russell is sort of having a, a re-coming out party again. Yeah. Not, not to say he ever needed to go away. I have a feeling Kurt Russell has been fielding offers for a long, long time, but over the last couple of years with Hateful Eight and with this and showing up in Bone Tomahawk and all different weird, quirky, cool things, um, I, I think that this is so cool. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so excited. I, I love this movie, uh, the first movie, and, um, and I also love the idea of adding a little bit of, you know, I loved the um, emotion in the first movie, even though there were only a couple of scenes about Star Lord and where he came from, and you know the importance of the mixtape and all of that. I love adding someone like Kurt Russell if he's playing Star Lord's right. father to give that emotional core to the story a little bit more intensity. Um, I, I think it's great, so I'm stoked. Clark, you, you forgot his. Kurt Russell's pivotal role in Fast and the Furious That's Seven. Right. He sure That's did. Thinking. Yeah, like, like he was I'm so thinking. impactful in that <laughs> movie. Um, yeah, we. The question is, who is he gonna play? I mean, or is he gonna play the father? And yeah. who, who the father? is going to be because the whole James, right. well, right. because James yeah. Gunn has said that it's not going to be yep. what it is in the comic book. In the comic book, his father is Jason. Um, and I think they're going to maybe maybe take that character and then merge it with maybe some other characters. Mm -hmm. You know, people have been speculating Adam Warlock. Right. We don't we don't know. So I think that's the big story out of this. Um, when I first glanced at the notes and I saw that name, Palm Clemente, I thought that was a character's name. Oh, right. I thought that was like, <laughs> I, I haven't heard of this this character before. <laughs> but then I kind of looked up Mantis. I looked at this girl and I was like, okay, that who who they're describing looks yeah. like this this girl fits. It also it, it sh again bringing it back to James Gunn is that he knows the property really well. He knows the characters. He knows where to fit them in. So he's proven in that first movie that he set up the pieces right. So he's setting it up again. Um, and then the Kurt Russell thing to me is obviously the one that stands out the most. I have a question. Yeah. Wasn't Matthew McConaughey being rumored, rumored. to yeah. play yeah. the? He fun was. Pacino was. Like there were a lot. So of people. that's not the father. But not the father. Oh, he was, was not else. McConaughey. Was not no, for some, Star Wars. No, I don't even. It, it was. It was for like a villain or something, wasn't it? He was just rumored for, for the something. movie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say because if that was for Star Lord's dad, and then you go someone like Kurt, Ro I mean, yeah, it no, wouldn't have made a whole off. lot of sense. Yeah. But okay. And do you think Baby Groot is gonna be small the whole time? I kind of hope so. I think he's gonna I grow. Hope so. I think he's gonna hit like teenage status. He by the time we end the movie, by the end of the movie, I think teenage. status. That's a great question for you guys out there. Comment right now if whether you're watching live or if you're watching this on replay a little later on do you think baby Groot a should he stay baby Groot the whole time or will he eventually grow to be the Groot that we know I, I'd love to hear what people are saying out there all right Natasha what's next four new posters for the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were released Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows is a sequel to the 2014 hit film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the film is based on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles characters created by Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman and is directed 
directed by Earth to Echo's David Green. Michael Bay from Transformer from the Transformers franchise returns to produce alongside his Platinum Dunes partner Brad Fuller and Andrew Form, with Galen Walker and Scott Mednick also producing. Dennis, what do you think of the new posters? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's, and I'm not even hating on the movie because like I'm more like where Campy and Schnepp, where I actually kind of had fun with this movie. Yeah. So I'm not saying this movie is going to be terrible or anything like. But the posters themselves are very uninspired. Mm -hmm. They look like uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man posters. That's what I thought. And they like Photoshop yep. Spider-Man out and put the turtles in. Just it, this, if you see this at like if you're walking at a movie theater, you're not gonna be like, oh, I gotta go see that. I just I think they could have done something better. Uh, I'm gonna disagree. I I I'm, I didn't like the first yeah. one. Uh, I liked when the turtles were on. But I really dig the posters. I like them a lot. I think that for those reasons that you just said, as far as it does look like Spider-Man, but I think that this plays to the audience. I think that this is, if you're a Turtles fan, I think Mark Ellis is losing his mind right now with these posters. <laughs> like this is, he's probably got a slice of pizza in his mouth and screaming cowabunga. He's looking at these things. He's like, these posters to me are everything that I wanted to see from the Turtles. The one scene in the Turtles, the first movie, was in the elevator. When they're all in the elevator, that was like, that was the Turtles that I, that I knew. And I thought Lieberman did for the, an okay job. I'm actually excited about Green directing this movie, and I want to see what he can do. But these posters, to me, it screams out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I haven't loved everything I've seen from the new trailers and everything, too, but I think as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fans, if you see these posters and you've seen these trailers, I think you should be excited that this movie's coming out. I don't know. Clark? Yeah, I felt kind of like when I saw the those first looks, like the, tra the trailers that we've seen from the new Turtles movie, it felt fun. The energy in those trailers are really fun and, and playful. And then when I saw these posters, they were very somber and solemn mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And so it just was, whether or not I like them or what they say to me as a fan, it just was kind of confusing messaging a little. Not saying that they need to be crazy and like, you know, complete goofballs in the posters, but I just, I don't know. There was a bit of a contradiction in the marketing material from what we've seen so far so I find that interesting but I agree with you Dennis when I first saw these I thought they looked like 2002 Spider-Man also so I was kind of just like nah we've seen this Okay, we've reached that part of the show that it's buy or sell. Pretty easy how it works Natasha's going to read off some topics and the panel here is just going to say buy or sell That's it Although many people are excited to see the upcoming Captain America Civil War, there are many who wonder if the film will essentially become The Avengers 2.5. Actor Chris Evans assures us that is not the case. In an interview for Disney 23, a magazine available to D23 Gold members, the actor said, as quoted by Yahoo Movies, even though there are a lot of characters, the focus is on Steve and his struggle, especially his struggle with Tony Stark. It's exciting to see a guy who's as optimistic and as selfless as Steve be met with letdown, betrayal, frustration, and selfishness. There are events and people in his life that test him, that challenge him, and force him to reevaluate who he is and what he wants out of life. Clark, buy or sell Evans' comments that Civil War will continue Steve Rogers' journey and not be an Avengers continuation. Yeah, I buy it. I definitely buy it. It. I'm very excited for Civil War, like very excited. Um, I love everything I've seen so far. And um, and I think too, when you think about the Marvel movies uh, over the last couple of years, it's not necessarily anything um, new that there are different characters, you know, from all around the universe sort of coming into play and being important parts of those stories. And frankly, I didn't really feel like the trailers or the promotional materials have set it up to be like an Avengers right. 2.5. So I don't feel misled by that at all um, and I love that he's sort of honing in on the fact that this is at its core yes there are other appearances from other characters but at its core it's a story about Tony and um, and and Cap and so I, I love it I buy it big time yeah I'm going to buy it as well and I think that I can understand where a lot of people might say oh because Iron Man's going to be in it and now you're introducing Black Panther and Spider-Man and, and Ant-Man's going to be in it and it, it, Hawkeye and all these people are, are going to be back that you could say oh it's just going to be another Avengers which some people might not think that's a bad thing but you also got to remember who's directing it the Russo brothers and they're very aware of what they did arguably to me Captain America Winter Soldier is the best Marvel movie that's out there it's my favorite um, by far and these guys know that from what's happened before them whether it's any of the Avengers movies any of the movies that came before that it all leads up to this moment but it is the protagonist of the story is Steve Rogers and it's and and I think that you hear Chris Evans I, I feel the same way you did I never really felt this was going to be an Avengers 2.5 mm -hmm. even though that we had so many characters in there that people are just going to make that you know assumption right away 
but it's it's got to be Steve Rogers. Because look at the focus on him and Bucky. Mm-hmm. Look at that. That's going to be the main thing. And because it's about Steve Rogers, and they've also been building up so much in the Avengers and Avengers Two about how uh, both Steve Rogers and, and Tony have been butting heads. That you see that line. That's why that line is so impactful in the trailer when he says, "So was I." Everyone goes, "Oh!" And they, they're kicking the crap out of him as you're watching. Like you don't know who to root for. You kind of want Iron Man to get up, but it's that's to that to me shows. This is about Steve Rogers and Bucky and and Tony together, and it's their story. So it's, it's definitely the second Captain America movie. Mm-hmm. Dennis? Well, first off, how do we get membership into this special <laughs> D20 <laughs> gold, <laughs> gold <laughs> members yeah, magazine that I had never heard of before? Yeah. Apparently, it's an elite club that we are not privy to. Um, I, I buy the comments, though. I do think it is... It's going to be a mix. I think it's going to be a mix of Winter Soldier and Age of Ultron, and I'm okay with that because in Age of Ultron we saw the beginning of this kind of division between Tony Stark and, and Steve right, Rogers. Right. You know when they're talking at the farm, they're just they have different viewpoints and perspectives. Total opposite sides, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. perspective. They're all they're both trying to achieve the same goal, but they have different ways about going about it. And I think that's going to be the main focal point. But we are going to get a little. I think it's going to be a little. Avengers and a little Winter Soldier in there. Well, I mean that's kind of inevitable. I mean yeah. you're gonna you're Continuity, gonna have continuity. It's it's necessary. Well, yeah. I mean when you have that many characters yeah. in there, you're gonna have scenes that's gonna remind you of the Avengers. It's just whether or not the entire thread of the movie is gonna right. feel like an Avengers movie, and I just don't feel that it will. Mm-hmm. Okay, Natasha, what's next? According to the Hollywood Reporter, Julianne Moore is reportedly in talks to play the villain for Kingsman 2, which has Matthew Vaughn back as director and Taron Egerton reprising his role as Eggsy. The Hollywood Reporter also said that while there were rumors of having Colin Firth's character return either via flashbacks or with an identical twin, those ideas have been discarded and he is said to no longer be involved. Christian Byersell, Julianne Moore possibly playing the villain in Kingsman 2 and Firth no longer being involved. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna buy both of this uh, both of these and you guys know if you've been watching this show long enough I couldn't shut up about the Kingsman I love the Kingsman one of my favorite movies it was in my top 10 of last year it was so original I love Matthew Vaughn and everything that he brought to another you talk about another movie that no one really knew what it was about or it, it just it could have failed and it did really well because it was so different and it was a rated R comic book movie by the way um, a lot of people don't are not, are not they're always talking about Red, uh, Deadpool Kingsman came out last year, rated R comic book movie. But um, I'm going to buy Julianne Moore for obvious reasons. She's one of the best out there. The only time I've ever seen her phone it in was that stupid movie, that The Seventh Son. Oh, that crap fest. That was horrible. <laughs> I mean, she that movie, it stoinks, it's garbage, and she <laughs> was part of it, and she made it garbage because uh, she didn't care. You could just tell. She was like, what the hell did I sign into? Only time I've ever seen her phone it in. So to have her in this movie it elevates. Anytime you want to bring in somebody like a Julianne Moore and you could see what Matthew Vaughn will do with her, um, yeah, I buy it. Now, I buy the Colin first stuff, and I'm not going to spoil too much. You should have seen Kingsman by now if you haven't, but I won't spoil details. But I will say I think it's a smart move not to have him back because it, to me, could have been lazy or just relying on something that worked the first time. Like, oh, well, it shows the kind of director and, and writer I think that Matthew Vaughn is, you know, to where he's going to he's going to say, wait a minute, let's just let's get a new villain or not a new villain, but a new new uh, actor or, or star. And let's make this work. So I like it. I buy both of it. Dennis? Yeah, I'm going to buy it. She is one of the best actresses out there. She was amazing in Still Alice, the one she won the Oscar right, right. for. But you're right. The only hesitation is I, I keep thinking about Seventh Son. It was horrible. But I do give her a pass because, you know what, that whole movie sucked. And er- everyone in it like was... But there are actors and actresses out there, even if they're in shit bombs. I, she is the... She is the she, you would assume that she's going to be like committing, like, all right, I know this thing stinks, but I'm in it. And she's just like, check. she might as well have been making eggs in the kitchen. She yeah. Yeah, no but idea. I mean, he also had Jeff Bridges, who was also an Oscar winner in there, too. Like, he was just not, he didn't care They either. thought they were signing up for Lebowski, too, yeah. when they signed up for the seven yeah. seven. Um So I, I, I'm excited for her in this movie, uh, notwithstanding th- that movie. Um, I wonder, I think, though, the tone of the villain, though, will be kind of more of an over-the-top villain, because that's kind of what yeah, we're the used to. Sam Jackson was certainly that Because, one, yeah. I mean, we did see her play not so much a villain, but... A, a character that we didn't know exactly where she stood uh, in Hunger Games, where she was like, not a good guy, not a bad guy, just kind of somewhere in between. But I don't think that's going to happen with this one. I think it, with what Sam Jackson was, kind of over top, yeah. top villain. So 
Colin Firth not being uh, there, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but right. it makes sense. Clark? Yeah, I buy. I can't. I can't buy this anymore. Matt Vaughn is one of my favorite directors working today. I love everything he does. I love the way he does it, and I think it's interesting too, considering he wasn't back for Kick Ass Two. The idea that he's coming back for the second Kingsman movie. Um, I I love the idea of him putting his mark on this franchise, and I love the idea of him and Julianne Moore teaming up as well. And you know, Julianne Moore has played. So so many different characters throughout her entire career from her character in Big Lebowski, even like more comedic things like in that movie Nine Months where I actually think she's very charming and funny. Um, and then you have obviously her dramatic work. So I think that whatever direction she chooses, to, they choose to take her character, it will be exciting and it will be cool. And in terms of Colin Firth, you know, I um, yeah, I agree. Now, if they had brought him back, uh, back for the second film maybe as like an evil twin I think that could have been it fun it could have been fun but I think you run the risk of camp and like I know the movie is campy in, in general but I think that's again it just it, it might get a little lazy and for me like I, it's just going brand new and something you brought up though was with Matthew Vaughn because a long time Vaughn was was rumored to not be a part of it just producing it and I think because of that kick ass mm -hmm. thi two thing um, that's why he's coming back because I was strangely enough not excited that they announced this with, without him, I think that the, he's one of the he's the reason why this movie was it, it was his directing style. Mm -hmm. It was the way that he used music. It was the direction of the cast. It was everything that he did. It, it bumps me out a little bit because that means that I got to wait longer for the Flash Gordon remake. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that. I love this. Yeah, I think it's great. And um, But in terms of Colin Firth, the other thing that I wanted to say is that I don't believe that this franchise hinges on Colin Firth. Like, yes, he was sort of the face of it in terms of the marketing in the first movie. But I think, you know, it like you were saying, Christian, it's Matt Vaughn who is this franchise. And so so I don't think that it, it hinges the, the quality of it or, or even the importance of it for the fans. Right. I mean, as a big, big fan of this movie, I'm fine with Colin Firth not being in it. I think that, you know, as we've said before, no spoilers but i think his arc had a satisfying uh was satisfying yeah. and that's all i need all right natasha what's next a live action astro boy movie is now in development over at warner brothers and new line cinema thanks to a report from the hollywood reporter san andreas writers andre fabrizio fabrizio and jeremy passmore will write the script that's looking to skew up the age of its audience for a family-friendly adventure film originally running from 1952 to 1968 astro boy follows the adventures of the boy robot in a world where androids coexist alongside humans using his seven superpowers and high IQ to fight crime and villainy. Dennis buy or sell a live action Astro Boy movie finally being made. Uh, I'm going to sell it. I was actually one of the few people that went to the theaters to see the, the animated yeah. version of it. And I actually enjoyed it, but it did very poorly at the box office. I think it made $40 million worldwide wow. off a $65 million budget. Wow. And I just don't see... The, there's no name recognition. I mean, I know who Astro Boy is, but I, I'm, I'm older. I, I can't see all these kids or younger people going, oh, I want to see an Astro Boy movie. So I, for that reason, I sell it. Yeah, I'm going to sell it as well, though. But I think because... I'm going to sell it until I see a trailer. I'm going to sell it until I see the team that Warner Brothers puts together because I don't, I didn't really know even when I was going through it, it's like Astro Boy. Did I, oh, yeah, I definitely remember us talking about it on AMC. It's not like I don't get excited about it. I also don't know who's in it. I also don't know what the story is going to be. So, from what the information that I have right now, I'm just not ex as excited as other things because they've tried to do, like, whether well, Mr. Magoo or, mm -hmm. or, what's it, Peabody and Mr. Sherman, whatever mm -hmm. the hell that movie was. And and these older properties, I, even though I really like that movie, I they, like Peabody they, I, and Sherman. I, I, I really like Peabody and Sherman, but it didn't, it did okay no. because it's unless you really hit gold or you have Pixar or Disney doing it right now. Some animations are the exception, but th but this is one that I don't know. Mm. I'm going to tentatively sell it. Yeah, my context for Astro Boy is actually a line in Arrested Development where they say pull on a pair of jet pants and fly around like Astro Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I, but you know, to both of your points, yeah, there's not a big point of reference for this character for I think most people. And it's a sell for me too, unfortunately. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, like you said, Christian, I, I, I would want to see a trailer first or, right. or at least hear some casting announcements or something. But just on basic premise alone, I kind of just go, yeah. yeah, and even just the, the name, because there's a reason why Angry, Bur Angry Birds has a movie, because it's in the public consciousness right, right now. But Astro Boy, we, when was the last person anyone talked about Astro Boy? Arrested Development, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so now we get to that segment of the show. 
It's everything that's happening and it's opening this week, brought to you by our friends over at AMC. Natasha, what's coming out this week? Coming out this week is The Witch. In 1630 New England, panic and despair envelops a farmer played by Ralph Ineson, his wife played by Kate Dickey, and four of their children where their youngest son Samuel suddenly vanishes. The family blames Thomason played by Anya Taylor-Joy, the oldest daughter who was watching the boy at the time of his disappearance. With suspicion and paranoia mounting, twin siblings Mercy played by Ellie Granger and Jonas played by Lucas Dawson suspect Thomason of witchcraft testing the clan's faith, loyalty, and love to one another. It is written and directed by Robert Eggers. Clark, should audiences be looking forward to The Witch? So, yes, audiences should be looking forward to The Witch. However, audiences, you need to know something about The Witch. I don't know where my camera is, so I'm mm. sorry for all the whatever. But um, The Witch is a real movie. So when um, Stephen King, you know, just reviewed the film, thank you, Stephen King just reviewed the film and, uh, and said, you know, yes, this movie scared the hell out of me, but it's a real movie, he's right. This is not a horror movie in the way you think of horror movies. This is a drama, it's a period drama. It, they speak in old English. Um, you know, there is a sense of terror and dread and danger throughout the whole film, but pitching it as a horror movie, which it is. Pun intended. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but but that that's a very tricky thing, I think, with audience, managing audiences' expectations. You know, we saw a similar thing with The Babadook. When The Babadook finally came out, you know, William Friedkin had said, oh, it's the scariest movie I've ever seen. Now, I love The Babadook, and I think it's an incredible film. But I think for audiences showing up, you know, thinking, oh, this is going to be the scariest movie I've ever seen, and then getting a psychological drama yeah. um, about, about a mother losing her mind, that might not have been exactly what they thought. So The Witch is a great film, and Robert Eggers won Best Director at Sundance last year for a reason. Um, I just, and it will scare you, I think. I just want to manage audience expectations. Uh, I think that, because I saw the movie two days ago, and I will say that this movie is a really good film. It's a really good film, and I think that horror, fam horror fans will enjoy it for sure, and I think for the reasons that you're saying, actually, because I don't think that they're Expectations are going to be lowered if you don't get those jump scares mm -hmm. and the and the gratuitous violence just to have blood and gore. It's not that kind of movie. Those things, the jump scares don't happen, but there's there's some blood and stuff too. But when it happens, it certainly happens for a reason. But what I'll say is the other thing that sometimes that horror movies do because they they're easy to turn a profit because mm -hmm. you can. They, one of the reasons I don't like them is because a lot of times they're lazy and you make them for like six million dollars and if they make. $10 million, yay, we've made our money right. back and the audience got screwed. <laughs> this movie is a very low budget film. Mm -hmm. It does has no actors that you know. It probably cost a nickel and a Snickers bar to make. <laughs> um, but it delivers because these actors can act. They act. They absolutely deliver on their dialogue. They make me believe all that old English. It's not just like people, oh, well, they wanted them to talk like this and, and that kid's having a problem. I felt like I was watching all these kids. Mm -hmm. That being said, I'm not the biggest horror guy. So I felt like the end was a little kind of cliched and, and I was kind of hoping for a better ending. But I'm just not the horror guy. I'm just like, for me, when I go and see a horror movie, I'm just, you really, like, The Conjuring was a movie to me that really won me over. Um, this movie, again, I think horror fans will love. And if you are a horror fan, you should go out and see this film. I just don't know if it's going to win over. You and I are not horror guys. No. So I don't know if I'd say to you, like, you've got to spend your money on this because it's going to win you over and make you a horror. But you know You'll what? You'll appreciate I, the filmmaking. Well, I don't think anything's ever going to win me over and make me a horror right. fan. However... I'm really looking forward to this, and what Clark's saying to me actually makes me even more excited right. about this because this is this is the kind of horror that I like, where it's psychological, it's creepy. Just from the trailers, you can tell it's dripping with atmosphere. Yeah. That's what I want to say. I want to see the scariest thing is is what happens to people psychologically versus you know blood and guts. And right. You're talking yeah, about no, jump no. scares and yeah. all that stuff. That's that. why I don't watch. A lot of horror movies. Right. So this, what you're telling me, mm -hmm. you're selling me on it. All right. Good. And that's coming out this weekend. So go to AMC Theaters and go check that out. Now we're going to get to the portion of the show. It's the mailbag. You guys have submitted questions throughout the week, throughout the months. We go through them. We pick them. Natasha will read them. Before we do that, we also want to let you know that Natasha will be picking out live Twitter questions. So she's the gatekeeper. Be nice. Make sure <laughs> that you uh, go to at Collider Video and submit your questions there. 
do that as we read some of your mailbags. Okay, what do we got first? Sterling Jones writes, Greetings. Once again, the Oscars are upon us, and when we think of Oscars, we think of best of the best, mostly. However, something different popped up in my head. Wasted talent. What actors or actresses can you think of that had the chops to have a successful career in Hollywood, but let bad attitude, ego, etc. get in the way? Dennis? Uh, um, I My pick is... Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Mm. Shia LaBeouf is an extremely talented actor. People may not know that because they just reference the Transformers movie, but if you see him in a movie like Fury yeah. or uh, Lawless, you can tell he's he's got it. Yeah. But in his <laughs> his regular life, he does some a lot of weird things. One, I re- most recently he he I think he plagiarized uh, Dan Cloud's like comic book strip and turned it into a short film. Uh, I guess after. Um, the non-success of uh, Which one? Fury? Uh, uh, Fury did okay. No, 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 I think like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, right. So like he like ran out on the street, or he went on the street with like a paper bag over yeah, his head. Yeah, I'm not famous I'm anymore. I'm not fa- yeah. like it was. I think that was all shtick though. Because look, I'll I'll say this about Shia LaBeouf is that for the longest time I call, I, I wouldn't even call him his name. I used to call him Shia LaBoots because I wouldn't because he just said so, so many stupid things. I don't know what it was, but through the just do it yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. But the but as far it was Fury though, man. Fury won me up because he he's got the chops. It's when he's in roles like that, that kid is really, really talented. It's one it's it's the no 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 that shit. It's like get out of here with that stuff. It's like when he's he's not like he, I know some people like Eagle Eye. I wasn't a big fan of it. I saw that, that was kind of the downfall of him on the on the big blockbuster turns. But when it come, when he's doing these roles again, I bring up Fury and I, I, he didn't you do guy to recognizing your saints? Yeah, but when he's yeah. in those roles he, and he outacted everyone, mm-hmm. everyone in that movie, yes. including Robert Downey Jr. He, man, he's got skills. So I think, but for me, my pick is actually Ed Norton. Oh. Um, to me, Ed Norton is a guy that every single time with Primal Fear and all yeah. these. I mean, the guy is phenomenal. Look what he did in Birdman. But he's just notorious for being a terror on mm-hmm. set. Like, I mean, it, it cost him the role in The Hulk. And other times you, you read all these things about him. And it, even in Birdman, they kind of played off his yeah. personality. That's why he was perfect for it. That's why he was perfect for it. So he's a guy that I thought had, I wouldn't say wasted talent because he just delivers every damn time. But I think he would have had so much more to more opportunities had he not been, mm. uh, I don't want to say a ball bag, but he just he, he just hadn't been as, <laughs> as great, I think. I don't want to say a ball bag, yeah. but, but a ball but bag. A ball I bag. mean, that's, yeah. uh, you know, I so I misread the question and I just looked at people who uh, you know haven't who are so great but haven't maybe become major movie stars Um, but I I, because you know I don't want to speak about uh, anyone's alleged reputation but I agree with both of your picks and I was rewatching Constantine recently um, which I like so whatever Uh, but you know Shia is great in it and Norton's great too and it's and Norton's talent behind the camera is undeniable as well Um, so I would agree with both of yours well people were talking Talking about beforehand too, the, the uh, you guys are putting in some great suggestions. Looking at the live chat as well too, Mel Gibson's one. Mm-hmm. Oh, you look at I mean because Mel mm-hmm. Gibson to me is still one of the best directors ever. I know the guy is out of his mind, um, <laughs> but like what you look at Apocalypto and even Passion of the Christ, but Braveheart to me is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Mel Gibson is one of the most charming and talented actors I think I've ever seen and I I really, you know, when he's not defensive, I love listening to him in interviews because he's he's an interesting and but I I can't I mean I personally just for personal reasons won't support him yeah, as Yeah, I get it. I understand. All right, what's next? All right, Frank writes, Hi guys, I was wondering why you think people want Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, to fail miserably. It seems like for all the hype behind the film, there is equal negativity. My thought is that people just don't like Zack Snyder, and it's cool at the moment to nitpick slash criticize DC. Love the show. Cheers. This is nuts. I mean, in general, because here, here's the thing. Like, we, Mark and I were just on uh, Movie Fights uh, last week, and this topic came up as far as the the trailer and how it would be. I have never seen such a debate in the, both the comments section and just the way that, that the video was titled about, it's amazing how hardcore that the two audiences are. And I just don't understand, and I think we've talked about this many times, both DC and Marvel are rooting for each other to do well. They need each other to do well. Now, as far as the fans go and why, now, I was not thrilled 
the, not by the last trailer, but the trailer before that, when they revealed everything, I just said, I just thought there was bad marketing along the line. It doesn't mean I hate DC. It means I didn't like the particular movie. And now I've also said that I don't think Zack Snyder is the best in regards to acting, and uh, he's, he, he's sometimes a lot more style than he is substance. However, I might be the only person on this panel that really enjoyed Man of Steel. I liked it and love it. I really enjoy it. I like it the more and more I watch it. But um, I also can acknowledge that there's certain things that, that Zack Snyder doesn't do as well as other directors. Now, that being said, there's a reason Ben Affleck was brought onto this movie. Um, and I think that people are actually, because of that last trailer, are coming more on the side of this movie being a good movie and being positive. And I also think that sometimes Marvel fans will play, because DC fans right now have like the one movie, Man of Steel, that did pretty good. Mm. But they don't have anything else because nothing has come out yet. So a lot of times the Marvel fans and other people just like to poke the bear. Yeah. And because if you say one thing, you can, right now, and I guarantee it's probably happening in the comments, you guys are probably, DC sucks, fuck you, fat man. And you have to go nuts. And it's, but I, honestly, it's part of this that I love the passion behind it. That's why these movies are doing so well. That's why we have these DC fans and these Marvel fans who are so passionate about Batman and Superman and say, we're going to take over. Screw you, Marvel. Let's be your friends on the same page, but it's good. It's like WCW versus <laughs> WWF back in the day. It, it is all good. And I think that in regards to why we are hating it, I don't think it's the case. We start, I'm, I'm certainly not hating it. I just am trying to be realistic in certain aspects. But how do you feel? Yeah, I think also just Batman v Superman has such high expectations. And, and so some people are going to be really gunning for it to do well. And some people who maybe aren't fans of either Zack Snyder's work or maybe they weren't fans of Man of Steel right. are, are ready to hate it. I, I think it's one of those things where it's kind of more uh, confirmation bias where, where people want to believe what they want to believe. Because like last Friday, we talked about... Uh, the possible rumors of Batman v Superman not testing well. Right. People went nuts. Oh, they hated People, us talking yeah, about hated it. Yeah, hated us talking about it, and they, you know, they're like, that source, uh, hit fix, they, they're crap, blah, blah, blah. However, when that rumor came out about the, the WB execs giving it a standing ovation, which came from, like, a random source. Then they loved it. They, they loved it. You yeah. know, you, you, got, you got to pick and choose, you know? So yeah. I think whatever people want to believe is what they're going to think. But that's why I go back to the passion, because it's just, it's a matter of when you have this DC Cinematic Universe that, that is coming out now and for, and I understandably the fans of DC and comic book fans they want this movie and this franchise to survive and to do well and to be uh, putting up a fight against Marvel and that's why they want th this movie to do well Batman v Superman they want Suicide Squad because and so if someone said it just seems like people they want they don't want the negativity mm -hmm. to be like oh you just think it's going to fail because it's going to fail and I appreciate that it's just it's just amazing how much it's happening but Clark how do you feel about it well I don't know anything about the DC fans passion yeah. for, for because this. you love Man of Steel <laughs> Right. You know, it's so funny too because it's not like I was like this effing sucks and blah blah blah. It just was like I don't like this. But was it fire? It was, was fire. fire. Yeah. It was fire. <laughs> uh, so me talking about this at all isn't kicking the hornet's nest. But what I will say is, uh, for those of you still listening and not setting your computers on fire, uh, you know, I think the the criticism when you look at the trailers for Batman versus Superman uh, got, comes down to, you know, I agree. I did not like the, um, not this last trailer. I really loved this last, the last trailer. trailer was great. It was great. It That's the movie they sold us when they said it was movie, the movie See, was coming out. And this is the thing, like, why did it take so long for us to get that trailer? Yeah. It's just confusing to me. Um, based on what we saw in the last trailer, the second to last trailer, though, you know, I think that that, that, kind of gave it, it's the first look into these things like you guys were saying we've had one of these movies and um, and so fans are obviously going to overanalyze and hang on to you know the little nuggets that they get because there's only been one film I will say that my biggest reservation with this concept is too much too fast the idea of of w so many characters that are allegedly going to be at making appearances or be involved you know we we do only have have that one Man of Steel movie, so we're jumping right into something else. You look like you want to say something. I just I'm on the other side of that. Just okay. be, just, just because I think that to me it's it's at this point like you, you kind of have to. That's that's kind of if but you're on this. Do you? Yeah, you kind of have to. I think because if if you are if you, the Man of Steel, you launched your biggest character in Superman. Now you could have a, announced 
a Batman movie, you know, and done that first. And now it's Ben Affleck as Batman, done a Batman movie, then let those two things happen kind of on their own, and then set up Batman v Superman later. But it's like you can set up everybody in this big movie. It's going to be huge. It's coming out in March where nothing. It's it's going to own March and it's going to come out there. And then you can play into Wonder Woman. Then you can play into Suicide Squad. And you're introducing the cinematic universe in a kind of fun and creative way. Mm-hmm. So I'm not necessarily talking about Batman and Superman in the same movie. Being you're talking about everybody in there. That's no, no, I know that's about. what I'm yeah. saying. But that's what I'm saying as well too. Because by doing that, I don't think that it's going to overwhelm the movie. I think it's going to focus primarily on Batman and Superman. Mm-hmm. I think by placing Wonder Woman in there and then giving shout outs to you know you have oh there's Aquaman lives in this universe and whoever else they Mm -hmm. they play into this it's going to let you know these are the characters you're going to continue to see in our universe hope you enjoy them because here they come Mm -hmm. I think it's a good way to do it I agree that if it starts to become like a side story where Wonder Woman is an hour of the movie and Aquaman is another half an hour of the movie then that's going to weigh it down but I don't think that's the case I'll argue with you though Batman is their biggest character Superman is not the biggest character I said one of the biggest characters okay I say Batman is the end all be all and that's that's my point as far as why they're bringing him in to the second one because you got Batman you have Superman well they could have done a Batman solo movie that's what I'm saying they could have done that but then you have to wait again for Superman you gotta wait it's like it's like now let's just put them all together then they can do because if this movie hits or when this movie hits and they're going to put out the standalone Batman movie that now you've introduced Ben Affleck in Batman because let's say you didn't have all the confidence in the world of him as Batman how the fans were going to react to him but then they really love him in Batman v Superman. Then you know, let's go on with that trilogy. And Ben Affleck, the director right. of the town, and Argo is directing your Batman movies. I think that it's a smart movie. I'm that super excited that, for that. That movie. is a movie that I want to see. But real fast, I do want to say the second thing that I would argue that would give people pause about what they've seen so far is exactly what you guys are talking about. Parts of the what we've seen look super strong, right? So like Ben Affleck as Batman looks amazing yeah. that yeah. looks great um what we've seen from wonder woman you know fans are generally very excited about what we've seen there but then you have the other parts that we've been introduced to like perhaps jesse eisenberg as lex luther yeah, which wasn't a fan. Uh, this is not working for me yeah. i you know and and it's not because he's doing something different it's because i don't like what he's doing yeah. just from what i've seen who knows because you know that same report that y'all were citing the drew at, Fit, at hit fix report said that jesse eisenberg is the best part yeah. of the whole movie right. so maybe Maybe we will be surprised. Maybe the trailers are just misleading. But I think what you're getting at, the hesitation for the overall film, based on what we've seen so far, is that having an awesome Batman character and performance doesn't in Batman versus Superman does not a good movie make. Right. That's one part in the in the whole. So for me as a you know as an audience member, those are the things yeah. that are giving me pause. Yeah, I mean and we'll see. I mean the movie is gonna be upon us pretty soon. I'm still super excited to see the movie. Me too. And I think it's gonna be good. Yeah. I just you know I I, 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 I like all the big movies you kind of want to lower your expectations sometimes because sometimes it's just too much yeah um okay now it's time to take your twitter questions you guys have been sending in tweets at collider video natasha has been going through them natasha what are they saying luke star killer asks do you guys think there is a chance they'll kill off r2 in episode eight due to the success of bb8 and episode eight supposed to be darker is there zero zero chance absolutely no chance they'll kill off all the other characters before (laughs) they kill off r2d2 yeah think about the kids the kids would go nuts if that happened bb8 is great but R2-D2 is classic. Uh, yeah, they'll kill him off if they want everyone to boycott Star yeah. Wars. Uh, they are not going to kill R2. And ruin Christmas. Yeah, R2-D2 <laughs> oh, is the one. Right. It, he's He will be the one character that will live throughout the entire Star Wars. Now, if there's episodes 11, 12, 13, yeah. 14, he will be around. C-3PO, gone. Yeah. See, uh, that's what I was going to uh, say. Well, because, because Anthony Daniels won't shut his mouth. You know, It's like you can build an R2-D2 and have him zip around. Um, but I think that R2-D2, we were bummed that he was quiet throughout the entire Force Awakens. He's going to have a bigger role in episode 8. Now, whether or not he gets shot or something, that's another case. He gets shot in every other movie. So and as long as he's not flying around, I'm cool. But I don't think they're going to ever kill off R2-D2. Nope. I, I would say goodbye to C-3PO before R2. Yeah. Every, any other character well, in Star Wars yeah. before yeah. R2-D2. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Natasha, what's next? Paul asks, can Deadpool beat Passion of Christ to become the number one domestic R-rated movie of all time? Ooh, great question. What, I wonder, what, what let me, is I'm going to look. I'll look. You guys debate. Uh... I will say. Hmm, I gotta no. tell you the numbers. 
just because I just remember Passion of the Christ. It Didn't just it kept like half going. A billion? It just kept Sorry. going and going and going, and people were seeing it over and over and yeah. over. And, and people will see Deadpool over and over again, but not in the droves that Passion of the Christ. Worldwide, the Passion of the Christ made six hundred and eleven million dollars. Um, do I think that Deadpool can make? What about domestic though? Domestic, it made three hundred and seventy. Um, it was a question domestic? Wow. Was a question I think it's domestic. It was domestic. It's I think worldwide is possible. It, it, it is. I mean, we're, this is like ten years ago too. Um, I and the, you mean look at look at Fast and the Furious, which I, mean, I know it's not rated R, but Fast and the Furious made a billion. Who the hell thought that was going to happen? Yeah. You know. Um, and this is made already worldwide three hundred sixteen million, one hundred sixty three domestic. Doesn't really have too much competition until uh, Batman v Superman comes out. The question it's, is, is it going to make double the, what it's already made? I don't know. It's going to be hard to do, but I wouldn't be shocked if it did. I would say domestically, no, but I think worldwide it might have yeah, a chance. Yeah, I think yeah. worldwide, yeah. but I not agree. domestic. Domestic would be tough. Yep. Okay, what's next? All right, Bazinga Guy says, there's a petition going around to get Deadpool to host Saturday Night Live. <laughs> would you like to see that? I think I'd be cool with Ryan Reynolds. No, I'd like to see it. I, the I whole just, thing, the whole Ryan uh, Deadpool doing. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I'd love, to, I'd love to see it. I, I don't know about a petition. We have petitions for craziest things, <laughs> like if someone gets, you know, written off of a show or a movie or something. Like people just petitioning left and right, you know. Right. But like, then, then you have like other causes that get like no signatures. Yeah. I'd right. rather. I'd like to see Ryan Reynolds host a Saturday Night. But Live. and do a Deadpool. And skit. do a Deadpool sketch, yeah. of course. Yeah. He could even do his opening monologue as Deadpool. Nah, I want the whole thing. Yeah. The whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> Start. <laughs> to finish, and then even the musical act, It'd Deadpool. Be, that would be funny. It would be. I mean, look, it would be a good, uh, a good gimmick, you know. And I just, it would have been funny if they did that before the movie came out because it, it would play into the marketing. I don't know if you necessarily need to do it anymore for Deadpool too. Oh. That's Deadpool, what the, yeah, there that, you go. Then you have a shot. Him and Cable can host together. Yeah. All right, Natasha, what's next? <laughs> Jeff Ekonen asks, would you guys ever consider doing a call-in segment on movie news like the schmoes know do sometimes? I don't. We can't do that yet, right? Uh, I don't know if we ever done call in. We tried to do uh, video questions before, but that didn't do very well. We used yeah. to do Skype. We used to do Skype. I mean, the thing about Skype, though, is that because there's that lag, even though it's short, it's just you don't have that chemistry with a person that's here. Yeah. So unless there's like a big guest that we would Skype in, I, right. I think we'd limit to... At least the panelist, anyways. Well, that was a studio. question. That was a question I can ask you on the air then too, because I'm because we do have people call in for the Schmoes show, and if you guys didn't know, the Schmoes uh, Phase Six show is coming back. We'll be shooting here, and it'll be back in March. Um, but could we take calls again? Are we able to do that yet? Or we don't? Not yet. I think from a technical standpoint, we could. Okay. I think the issue is who's going to. Uh, screen these Cody. questions Cody <laughs> yeah Cody will do yeah it. for for a movie talk every day I yeah don't, I don't <laughs> know about that all right so well there's there's an option that we may be able to bring the calls back for schmoes we don't know we'll we'll we'll, we'll tell you soon okay well what's next George asks why is Superman so hated and Luke Skywalker so loved when they're practically the same character oh I don't agree with that at all yeah, I, I, don't think I, th I think Luke's a lot more flawed than than Superman is but I actually Superman's my favorite character I um, and I uh, but I understand he's kind of like the Boy Scout that's yeah. why a lot of people that's why also why I think that they made him a little darker in this last movie and the whole Zod things the, the purest Superman fans didn't love what happened with the Zod I thought it was a good change to his personality um, but as far as Luke, I mean, Luke was kind of contemplating going to the dark side. He had a yeah. lot of his father in him. In Empire Strikes Back, he's impatient. Yoda says yeah. as much, too. He's aggressive. Um, he's, he's pretty flawed. And Superman, I, I like him as a character as well. That's why I do like more of his alternate universe type stuff, like Red Sun or All-Star Superman, where it's not exactly the, the Superman we're, we're used to. Right. Yep. Clark? I, I don't think that they're similar. So it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be contrarian, yeah, but no. I, I, apples and oranges. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I love Superman, though. And uh, who doesn't love Luke Skywalker? I can't right. wait to see Beardy Luke Skywalker. Beardy, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's take two more. Miles Alejandrino asks, do you think Lucasfilm will ever develop non-Star Wars properties or is the force too all-consuming for them? Indiana Jones, baby. Yeah. They're going to be doing indie. Willow. Didn't Lucasfilm yeah, do I think Willow? So. Yeah. Well, I, you think we'll see a Willow remake? I want one. And you know what I... I'm going to take this one. Do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, you no. Know, you know what? I want like a Mad Mardigan, uh, you know, origin story or something with Jason Momoa as Mad Mardigan. Wow. Come on, people. Make this happen. Please get your get your petition going for more Willow. Yeah, That's I mean, what I Will want. Willow would be fine. I think Warwick Davis could still play Willow. Too. Oh, he it's totally... 
and he'd Delish. crush it. Have you guys ever watched the HBO series Life is Life yeah. is Short? Did he do like a, sp- a spoof? On, on, on the finale, they yeah. had Val Kilmer come back. Oh, and he, really? He, he he was trying to trick Warwick Davis and oh yeah, we're making a Willow too. You just need to raise the money for it, and then we'll we'll do it. And Scam money from yeah, it. exactly. Oh, that's great. It's pretty hilarious. I Val Kilmer it. has had some great runs on shows. He was great on Entourage too. And um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He's yeah. he's still got it. Yeah, he's he's really good. I think that uh, I would love to see. I think Lucasfilm will do more properties besides Star Wars as well too. But their their bread and butter obviously is Star Wars, and and for right now their focus needs to be Star Wars. But Indiana Jones will come back now. Whether or not that's in the next two to five years, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, okay, last one. Fernando Ruiz asks, "Do you think we will ever see Supergirl in any of the DC live action movies?" Mm. Clark, go ahead. Um. Well, not Melissa Benoist, Supergirl. Um, aside from the fact that it seems like DC is keeping their, you know, their actors separate in terms of the TV universes and the and the movie universes, I think that um, the Supergirl that's on the CBS show is is a much different tone tonally. Um, she, I don't know if she would necessarily fit into the tone that's been created uh, on the big screen as of now. Um, but you know, maybe maybe we could. I don't know. I, I think I think it would be an odd. Fit. Not to say that I wouldn't like to see it, but um, but I think for that character, the show is really doing her justice in a lot of in a lot of ways, and um, and you know, so so that's what I would say. I you know, look in terms of in terms of bringing more women into the DC cinematic universe, my girl is Zatanna. I love Zatanna. I want you know when Deadpool got uh, blew up, my first thought was, does this mean we're getting Justice League Dark? Like you know, forget about making Suicide Squad R rated or changing that. It's our Already on its track like I want Justice League Dark to come uh, but that's just me I've been watching Young Justice on Netflix and they have <laughs> Zatanna in there but she's like a teenage girl um, I, th- I think we will maybe sometime in the future they had they kind of hinted at it with that pre- it, yeah. yeah with that prequel comic book for for Man of Steel they showed that one pod right, that had right. come down right. and, and, and they that showed Kara. that in the movie too yeah that's right. yeah so I do think we will see her but not anytime soon. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that eventually, and, and they're going to, they have to see, it goes back to our previous conversation. They have to see how this DCU is going to pan out, how Batman v Superman goes over financially and critically with both, obviously, critics and fans. Uh, and then we're going to see how Suicide Squad does. And then the properties will start coming because they're going to put two to three out a year. And then I think Supergirl could absolutely make an appearance in, in one of the movies for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, that's going to do it for us today. What a fun show. I want to thank the panelists today. First of all, he is Mr. Dennis Zhang. Where can the people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.TZENG. And Clark Wolf, please tell the people where they can find you. You guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope at Clark Wolf. Clark with an E, Wolf with an E, and on YouTube where I am walking off this set and I'm doing a full-length review of The Witch. So that's going up in probably an hour. Uh, YouTube.com slash official Clark Wolf. And the hostess with, I'm not going to say the most, this is terrible, uh, Natasha <laughs> Martinez. Where can they find you? You guys can find me on Instagram at Natasha A. Martinez and on Twitter at Natasha Lexis underscore. And for me, Christian Harloff, you can find me at Christian Harloff, both Instagram and Twitter. I have this whole Oscar campaign thing I'm doing right now. Check me out on Instagram on that. But what I will also let you guys know, just to go back into what we announced yesterday with all the new shows we have coming on, I'm very excited and have been talking about the Ultimate Schmodown movie trivia game show. Um, It is going to be very WWE slash (laughs) UFC movie trivia from all your favorite YouTube personalities and other people as well, too. But you guys are going to be crucial in all of this. We need you guys to suggest people that you want to see. And like I mentioned yesterday, a, a John Schnepp versus John Campia battle or, you know, a, a Christian Harlow versus Andy Signore or whatever. Whatever these matches are that you guys want to see, like a, a dream matchup that I want to make happen is a Jeremy Johns versus Chris Stuckman, I think will be a, a cool battle. There's all these battles and we're going to have a lot of fun doing this, but it's up to you guys to keep suggesting these things. We're going to make this theatrical. And when we announce the date, we want you guys there suggesting all of your upcoming matches and we're going to have some like fun contests as well too it's pretty exciting so that's it thank you guys for tuning in today and we'll be back tomorrow as always make sure you check out Jedi Council check, uh, later on today check out Mailbag uh, this weekend and Movie Talk obviously tomorrow with my main man Dennis Zhang okay guys thanks great hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.